Hey everybody, and welcome to Dominion Cards. This is a video series where we take a strategic, in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today we're looking at Money Lender. This is a four-cost action card from the base game, and it says you may trash a copper from your hand for three coins. Um, you do actually have to trash a copper to get the three coins. If you don't trash one, you don't get anything from it. Um, so Moneylender is a pretty basic card. There's not really very much to say, so this will be a quick one. So Moneylender trashes your coppers, and it gives you a big money boost um, while you do it. So in the early game, um, this is pretty good way to trash cards while also maintaining economy. Generally, if you think about trash cards trashing from hand, um, that's sort of reducing the number of useful cards that you get to play that turn. And if you're trashing like coppers, well, you don't get to play the copper that turn and you just have slightly less money to spend. Uh, money Lender gets around that by just giving you a big dollop of money while you do it. Um, so trashing coppers is good because coppers are a bad card and you start with a load of them. Um, but estates are even worse. So what you tend to find is that um, if a card can trash both estates and coppers pretty well, then you would rather get that trasher instead because you would like to take the take out the estates first. So an example would be Bounty Hunter from Menagerie. Um, it's a lot like Money Lender, but um, it can give you three coins for trashing an estate as well, or exiling it in this case. So, um, you know, a card like that's just going to be much better than Money Lender. Um, Money Lender is pretty slow. It only trashes a single card at a time. So if you get to use it every shuffle, you got to shuffle it in and play it seven times just to get rid of all of your coppers. Uh, that's a long time to do. Um, and it's terminal as well when you do that. So it's an action that you got to spend on just to do that. Uh, Money Lender is best, like most cards, in a in, in a deck where you draw all of your cards every turn, um, so you can pair it up easily with those last remaining coppers, because um, you've got to trash it from your hand, so you've got to get them both into your hand at the same time. Now that um, three coins that Money Lender gives sounds like a huge amount of money, but um. Just worth mentioning that you buying Money Lender as an opening card is kind of the same for your economy as getting a silver. So here are two examples: one where you, someone's picked up Money Lender, and one where someone's picked up silver. And this is an example of like their turn three, for example. Um, you can see here that the top hand that took a silver um, has five money to spend, but the Money Lender, if they play the Money Lender, will also have five money to spend on a card. Um, that is because although it's giving you three coins, um, you don't get to play the copper that you trash, so you have to take one away. So it is a kind of like a card that's giving you two um, if, you know, you weren't trashing the copper, right, because you, you're not playing the copper instead. Um, so when it comes to, like, considering whether you want to get, like, a five-cost card early on, um, you know, Money Lender, when you think about it, is kind of the same as buying a silver, but you get to trash the coppers, so it's a lot better. Um, but the odds of hitting five are like largely the same, basically, um, unless you bought it with another terminal, of course. But you know, that's that's just an important point for that. Now, a question that everyone always has about money lender is when you run out of coppers, do you keep buying more of them? So the problem that money lender has is that as soon as you run out of coppers, um, it does nothing at all. Um, it only gives you a benefit if you trash a copper, so you haven't got any. You, it's a just completely dead, useless card. Um, now, if you have spare buys, you might think to yourself, well, okay, what if I bought another copper, right? I wasn't spending the buy anyway, and the copper cost me zero. Um, so if I buy one, is that a good idea? Um, now, if... <sighs> This is all assuming you don't have a way to just get rid of the money lender. If you have like a remodel, you could just like remodel the money lender into a gold, and that's probably going to be way better for you. Um, but if we assume that we don't have that, and so the money lender is just going to stick around in our deck, then if you are buying a copper solely for the purposes of trashing it to the money lender next turn, then that's kind of like buying a terminal gold. So in this case, you are getting the full value of three coins from money lender because there was no previous copper that you would have been playing otherwise, right, that you need to discount from that cost. So buying a copper just to trash in the money lender is kind of like buying a terminal gold for zero coins, um, but you've got to buy it every turn. Um, and is that good? Um, well, would you want to spend an action on three coins? Um, you're adding an extra stop card, just got to spend an action, and that gives you the three coins. Um, 
I mean, of course, it doesn't cost you any money, but uh, you know, how good is that? Well, it could be that that's only good for a short while. Eventually, you might consider to yourself, okay, I, I, I want to spend the action on something else, so I'm going to stop doing this. Um, but as long as the action remains viable and you're okay um, drawing that copper and buying it back every turn, then you know you can just keep doing that. Um, and it can be a source of money for the rest of the game. But generally, I would say that you've probably got a better thing to do. Like If you could just buy a single gold instead, then now you've got a non-terminal three money instead, which is probably going to be way better. But, you know, gold costs six and a copper costs zero. So it's a big difference. Um, yeah. And the good thing is, is that if you decide to stop doing it, then the copper disappears and you've actually gotten that stop card space is like freed up, so to speak. Um, and that's really it for Moneylender. Um, I wish there was more to say about this card, but it's so simple. Um, there is really nothing else to talk about strategy-wise. That's it. It's, it, just, it just trashes a copper and it gives you money. Um, there is nothing real special going on. So let's move on over to the online client and we will do our usual generating of kingdoms and assessing how good Moneylender is. So what's happening on this board? On this board, you've got which? Um, the trashing is only Moneylender, so you want it to start trashing down your coppers. Um, however, which is really important. There is no way to get rid of the witches. Uh, now, Militia and Moneylender are just as good at hitting five early on, but because it's so important to not let your opponent hit five or six to get the Witch and the Artisan, I think you would rather open Militia instead of Moneylender, but you will look to get a Moneylender eventually. Um, I think, yeah, I think you would open, like, Militia Silver. You would look to get a Witch first, and then you're going to try and you get a Moneylender, and you would hope to get up to Artisan and start buying a load of Labs. And although you will have curses, it's more important to try and get the curses into your opponent's deck. You want a throne room to throne the witch. And eventually your deck will stabilise and money lender will come along. You can probably throne it once or twice, um, clean down. And you should be able to draw past the curses. You do have council room if you need to um, for a little bit more draw because you've got villages or you, more witches, I suppose. Um, yeah, so money lender you get here, but you don't necessarily get it straight away. Maybe you pick it up on turn three or four instead of on turn one or two. Um, but yeah, money lender's good on that board. Um, what about here? So here we have chapel. Um, chapel is good. You've got festivals, throne rooms, smithies. You've got an entire like deck drawing. You've got bandit. Um, you're doing so much here. You're not picking up Money Lender because there's Chapel, and Chapel will trash all of your cards so quickly. Uh, there's just no room for Money Lender. Um, you wouldn't buy it. You would much rather get Militia instead early on, um, or Chapel Silver, but probably Chapel Militia. And yeah, you just look to build an engine from there. So Money Lender is ignored on this board because there is better trashing. Um, that's all there is to say on that regarding Money Lender. So we'll just move on. What's going on here? So we do not have any sort of village, um, but we do have lab to draw, and we've got an artisan that we can play to um, keep top-decking labs, uh, gaining them, so that's real nice. Um, if we want any plus buy, it's got to come from council room, which is a shame. Um, you open money lender here, and you do that to try and thin as many coppers as you can until it becomes time to play Artisan. And you may never get rid of all of the coppers because Artisan is so good, at least until the labs run out. Then when the labs run out, you might be able to go back to playing Moneylender a bit. Um, but all you're looking to do here really is, um, yeah, you play Artisan, gain labs, eventually buy some golds. Um, and then you just one province per turn, I guess, and you thin down a bit more with Money Lender. And eventually, I guess, suppose you will have like a silver, two golds, buy a province, draw up reliably with Lab, maybe get some duchies with Artisan. I think that's it. So Money Lender's good here. Um, you almost never really want more than one Money Lender, so we don't really have to consider that. How about here? Lots of Artisan boards at the moment. Um, so this is nice. We've got a workshop to get villages, moats, merchants. 
Um, we've got a money lender. We're not actually that interested in hitting five early on. However, money lender is the only trashing. So we're going to get it anyway. Um, we might even open money lender workshop. Um, we don't care that much about artisan because we don't really want these cards. Um, we're going to be drawing with village and moat and we're going to have merchants and silver. Um, I don't think we need to care so much about getting the silver straight away. Um, but yeah. So Moneylender Workshop, we just start picking up these cards. Eventually we draw, and I guess we do one province per turn. Is it okay to do Council Room for buys and then start picking up golds? I think it's a little bit too slow. Um, you can eventually workshop for silvers, but I don't know. I guess the reliability of merchants probably better. Um, I suppose we do have some treasures. I mean, maybe you could go to Double Province. I don't know how good it is. I suppose eventually you want Artisan. You can just get Duchies instead of going all the way for Double Province. Um, but yeah, Money Lender is the only trashing, so you definitely take one here in the opening and you use it just to trash the coppers. You don't really care about the money that much, but it might help you hit six for Arzan. Um, and the final kingdom that we're going to assess. So a lot of kingdoms we're getting where Money Lender is the only trashing. So here's another one where Money Lender is the only trashing. However, there's no village and there's witch. Um, and what that means, uh, so this is interesting, so um, because there is no real engine here and there is witch for cursing and it's super bad, um, what you're going to do is you're going to open with militia and silver, or uh, militia moat, probably not, just militia silver at first. You're going to want to hit witch, um, you're going to want to play witch. And you might get some labs, but you actually might never get money lender. And that is because the coppers are not the worst thing in the world. Um, you're going to be drowning in curses anyway. Um, is seller better than moat? Maybe you pick a moat at some point. I don't know. I don't I don't like moat, actually. I think it's bad. Um, I, I can see you never getting money lender here just because you don't care to trash the coppers because this is a money board. Um, it's really hard. There's no buys. There's a cursor. Um, maybe you will get some labs eventually. And the, the coppers are not the worst thing ever, um, just because if you get rid of them all and you get some gold, so like it's still pretty hard to draw your deck and draw enough money. Um, you want labs. You want to play militia. Maybe you maybe eventually have like two witches, two militias. you got some labs. You're looking to just play militia every turn when the curses run out. Um and, you know, the lack of village means there's just better things to play for a long time. You want to be playing witch rather than money lender. Um, and then you want to be playing militia when the curse has run out. So, yeah, I, I think money lender gets skipped on this board, even though it's the only trashing because the coppers are not super bad. Um, that's it for money lender. As you can see, if there's better trashes, um, you go for those. Um, Sometimes there are higher priority fours than trashing a single copper just because it's so slow. Um, but otherwise, money lender is really nice to open as long as there's not something that's even better. Um, that's it. There's 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 nothing terribly exciting about money lender to talk about. So really quick, easy video this one. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.